It's like saving, isn't it? Saving your pennies as a child, saving for a rainy day. No rain in Berlin today, but Kipchoge slowing up. That's, uh, is that his first uh, kilometre outside three minutes? It is. Yeah. It is. The first kilometre outside three minutes was the 38th. But four kilometres to go, less than four kilometres to go, three and a half kilometres to go, seven laps of a, a running track. About seven or eight laps of a running track and Kipchoge will be home and dry. There he is, he's just gone through 39k. And as you said quite rightly, Chris, just passing our, our hotel on the right of picture. And Lala Berlin. It's a rather useful hotel if you like a bit of shopping. It built into the same complex as an entire shopping centre. Kipchoge here needs to dig deep as never before. As I said, it's a running. I was going to say 37 years old. And I suppose his most astonishing quality, Chris, in many ways, and what has enabled this fabulous streak of marathon wins is his ability to stay uninjured, just to keep accumulating fitness, to build and build and build year on year. And that is the key for the majority of elite athletes. Most careers end because of injury. They don't end because of age, they end because of injury. And if you can avoid those injuries, of course you can keep going through your thirties, your mid thirties, into a, you know, the years approaching forty, which is what this man has done. It's what Eli, uh, Kennedy Sabekeli has done. It's what Haile Gebre Selassie has done. How many more marathons, competitive marathons, do you think we'll see from this man? I, I think it would be unfair to put a, a, a number on it because he prepares so well, so diligently. You know, this is his first marathon since early March. He gets it right again and again. And people used to say years ago that there's a finite number of marathons in your legs. That's just not true. He, he might have another six or eight good marathons in him if he, if he plays his cards right. I think a lot of people are saying he's got three or four. Who knows? There it is, leading men, 151.42, Chris, at 39k. The world record, 152.26. That cushion has come in un less than a minute. Yes, it has. It's uh, been chipped away at, but he should have enough in reserve. What concentration, what focus. And his next kilometre mark psychologically will be an important one for him. He'll see the figure four at the front of it for the first time. And there he will turn left and there'll be a, a few dog legs through Gendarme Mart and then eventually onto Unter den Linden and from there it will be a glorious sight. He'll see the Brandenburg Gate and beyond that the finish line. So next split will be at 40k and four years ago he went through 40k in 155.32. 155.32 at 40k. He will be comfortably inside that but is that margin, is that cushion coming down? And if so, how quickly? Because that's what he's drawing on here. Another hundred or so meters to go to the next checkpoint. Crowds, pretty good on both sides of the street, but when he turns the corner into the next couple of kilometers, the final couple of kilometers, we were out on the course yesterday, even for the inline skating, there's the Left hand turn at 40 kilometers. Now then, 3 11, the slowest of them all, 154.53 through 40 kilometers. Wow, that is significant, there's no doubt about it. 40k during his world record in 2018. Went through 40k in 155.29. That cushion has just come down to 36 seconds. It's still big. He's got 2k to go, about a mile and a half to run. Kipchoge surely will be okay. And Chris, I think the adrenaline has to be building in this system. I'm sure it takes quite something to get adrenaline building significantly in the Kipchoge, Kipchoge bloodstream. But surely, when you're a mile from home, he can pump a little bit harder with those arms, bounce a little bit higher with those feet, and cover the ground a little bit quicker. Under two kilometres to go, there is Jean Darman marked with the Berlin Concert Hall. Series of dog legs of 90 degree turns, but he's done them before, he'll be clicking them off. There are about three or four of them, and when he turns left for the final time, there is the Berlin Concert Hall on the left. This is a beautiful part of Berlin, you can see the crowds building all the time. 
Another left turn to come. What a sight that is. Berlin on a Sunday morning. Witnessing something very special here. We've seen so many brilliant races over the years. This could be the best of all. For a while we thought we'd see, we might see the first ever sub two hour marathon in a, an official competitive race. That will not happen, but we are on for a world record. Fingers crossed, we're on for a world record. Very gradually, even though he still bounces well, he still has that beautifully symmetrical style. We know he is slowing pretty dramatically. 3.11, the 40th kilometre from Elia Kipchoge. That is the slowest kilometre split of the race by a huge chunk. And he's through 40k now. Well, in this case, Ben will tell us for the last time where Elliot Kipchoge is. 3.02, two kilometres ago, 3.11 through to 40 kilometres. Will that be even slower going through 41 kilometres? He's got another 100 metres to go before we can give you that information. Well, the women's race, by the way, they are still projected to finish in under 2.16. 314, uh, 36 kilometer for the women. He's back on song, 253, an injection Oof. of pace. Goodness me, what a reaction that is. And that is the mark of a man who knows he's almost there. Another right turn into the final kilometer or so. He has almost exactly one kilometer to go in this race. And he kept choking, smiling. Of course he is. It's hurting. But he's on his way to an extraordinary performance here. This will be the best marathon we've ever seen in a competitive race. And the crowd's building all the time. And there is the hint of a smile there, Chris. You'll never know if it's a half smile, half grimace from Kipchoge as he negotiates this left-hand turn. I sense there is a slight upping of his game. I think he is now prepared to redline it and push hard through this next couple of minutes. On to Unterden Linden. That most famous of roads, he'll have the Brandenburg Gate in his sights. The lime trees on Unterden Linden flanking either side. And there it is for the first time. There is the Brandenburg Gate. That's the target. And beyond there, it's less than 400 metres to go. What a moment this is for Elliot Kipchoge. Let's keep an eye on the clock. We will tick round to two hours exactly. There's a reminder of the record as it stands. 201.39. It's not a question of whether Elliot Kepchoge will break the record, Tim. It's a question of by how much. Well, when he broke the world record four years ago, Chris, it was the biggest marathon world record advance in over 50 years. You have to go back to Derek Clayton to find such a big improvement. One minute 18, he took off Kimeto's world record. He's going to take another big chunk of his own world record here today. It'll be 15 out of 17 victories for Kipchoge. One more little dog leg to negotiate. The crowd's going crazy. There is the Brandenburg Gate and the sunshine has come out in Berlin. We are witnessing something very special indeed here. He goes through the arches in just outside it will be two hours. 201.39 is the target. He's going to smash the world record under the famous arches of the Brandenburg Gate built in 1791. And from here, 352 meters to go. Less than 60, 60 seconds of running. It's less than a lap of the track. All those early starts, all those endurance runs, the tempo runs, the sacrifices that he's made have all come down to this. His wife and children are watching back home in Kenya. The crowds are going crazy. It's history unfolding here on the street.